You're listening to Lore Friendly, episode 85. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Just moving along. How are you, Alice? I am fantastic, thank you. How are you? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. You had some big news, right? George R. R. Martin has gotten over his writer's block. That's what, that's what online. he said. That's what he said. He <laughs> said that he started working on the next book already, and it's like, finish the one that you fucking got. Oh, yeah. One at a time, babe. One at a time. <laughs> Translation, um, I'm worried that he's running out of money. <laughs> yeah. Maybe like me, he invested in lift chairs and <laughs> it's down like 30% in a week and he's he's scrambling. He's going, oh, I got to write that book now. <laughs> Isn't Lyft like basically rip off Uber? Isn't it the more socially conscious Uber? That's what I thought. I don't know. Because Uber know. had all those scandals. Oh they yeah, Uber the, uh... is fucking awful to its um, workers. Well, contractors, as they call them. Yeah, it's crazy. Never invest in the stock market. That's what rich people do. Apparently, I'm supposed to be poor. So, But yeah, that's probably what happened to George. So looking forward to that. Nothing else going on in my life. No. Anything that happened to you that was exciting? Um, No, not particularly. Uh, I was going to get another guinea pig, but then <laughs> it turned out they didn't have any girl guinea pigs, so I'm not getting another guinea pig. <sighs> To replace um, my uh, sadly named guinea pig Sansa. Oh, how many guinea pigs do you have? I just have the one now because Sansa passed away. Oh, but the thing that's is, very sad. Sansa foreshadowing. Pass- yeah, Sansa passed away um, right before I went to go see Captain Marvel. So we went to the cin- like literally the day of, and we're like, we need to get out of the house because otherwise I'm going to be a wreck. So we went out of the house to go and watch Captain Marvel, and uh, Dark Phoenix was one of the trailers that ran before the movie. And do you know who's playing Dark Phoenix? Yes. <laughs> Sophie Turner. Yep. You're AKA a Sansa. <laughs> so I started nearly bawling my eyes out in the cinema. And James was like, Alice, oh, what's wrong? And James doesn't watch Game of Thrones. So I was like, it's Sansa. And he's like, no, it's, it's, not a San- it's not Sansa at all. And it's like, no, Sansa. Sansa, Game of Thrones, Sansa. He's like, oh. He was confused because he thought the guinea pig was in the movie. Yeah. But apparently not. It's, it's no. He it's... um he was very confused also because he he doesn't understand why I'm so excited about Game of Thrones being back because um, like I've just told him that I hate watching. It's like, well, why would you watch it? <laughs> why is that something that you're into? And it's like, no, James, <laughs> no. And this is the way that I explained it to him. You helped me out through my worst periods of depression, James. Game of Thrones kept me sane during my worst periods of depression because it gave me something, something to hate that wasn't myself. It's the love to hate of your life. Yes, exactly. It was very therapeutic. Well, I'm glad you're better now and you can watch Game of Thrones with a level head. Yeah, I've noticed that in my note taking today. (laughs) <laughs> less Cause, anger yeah because because this is the thing with when we watch game of thrones episodes westworld we used to watch it together so mm-hmm. our notes would be made whilst we're talking on discord game of thrones i find it a more solitary experience <laughs> and so i make notes of things that i like and i dislike and normally the dislike list is massive <laughs> honestly the hate isn't there. Really? It, it's empty. Well, it's not empty. But, <laughs> yeah, there's, uh, still, there's still nits to there's pick. There's still stuff, yeah. Uh, before we get on to Game of Thrones, though, should we talk about Blades first? Yeah. Did you so to play it? I haven't managed to play it, but I have got it installed. And I'm just scared about loading it up because I hate microtransactions. And I know I'm not alone with this. And this game has been plagued by uh, angry reviewers well, talking about The microtransactions. To be fair, does anyone like microtransactions? Like, does anyone say, you know, like, oh, I love those. Ah, it's (laughs) my favorite thing. Transactions give them to me. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, love the hate, maybe, but not love. I've never heard of anybody loving them. The the question is how well they're integrated. Is it something that's in your face? Or is it something that's sort of in the background that is available if you want it? I guess the question is, how often does the game remind you that they're there and how often does the game pressure you into making those purchases that you because like you need it like if the game was so horribly unbalanced 
that would be one way they would do it, I guess. Is like you can't pass this level unless you buy this blood quenching yeah. sword for a thousand gems or whatever. Is it on a level of um the Harry Potter mystery game? Where you have to pay money if you don't want to see a child get strangled for 30 minutes? Or is it a bit more, you know, relaxed? I feel like it's a bit relaxed. I I only got one pop-up so far, which was after I got to level 5, I think. They asked me if I wanted to buy the Hero Starter Pack. The other thing that I noticed is that at level 6 or above, like at a certain point, there are dungeons that are just really difficult to beat unless you have more powerful gear or higher levels, so you can either grind yeah. or you can purchase the items. That's the other way that you may want to purchase the items. The The third thing is that you have to go to the store every day, I think, just because you get a free item, which is nice. I mean, you get a free item from the store every day, so it makes you go to that part of the section of the of the menu more or less yeah but all that stuff aside i don't really think it's in your face all that much it depends how much you want to grind i think the gameplay loop is fun you go to the dungeon you clear the dungeon you come back it's somewhat repetitive in that if it's the only thing you're doing you're constantly going to the dungeon coming back constantly going to the dungeon coming back yeah i would like more sort of gameplay aspects in the town uh someone mentioned on twitter that one thing they could have done is like maybe add like more of a harvest moon type thing where you can decorate the interior of the the houses and the towns or you could or talk to npcs more the npcs don't have a lot of dialogue options they have some but not as much as i would expect from a game that has no voice acting yeah so like if you if you only have text you would think that you could just talk to them for ages on ages Mm. and maybe that's my bias coming through because i I like to talk to npcs but yeah we we know so far yes (laughs) So, so far, there hasn't been enough of that, I don't think. I think if they added more of that, it would add more variety to the gameplay. Because the dungeons look really nice. It's just that I don't want to keep visiting yeah. them. Yeah. And the other thing is, if you add more stuff to do in the town, then it allows you to play the game while you wait for your chest to open. Yeah. <laughs> because the other thing is that the chests that you get as rewards for completing quests or completing dungeons, the silver ones take one hour they used to take three but they take one now uh they take an hour to unlock it so if you could play the game while you're waiting for that hour to pass if you can do stuff in the town if you can talk to npcs if you can raise their disposition and all that if there are other gameplay aspects in the town i feel like it would add variety to the game at the same time making the waiting more bearable but overall i like it i like the gameplay loop i like the combat and so far it's fun to play yeah, fair, fair. I just think my thing is is that I would rather just outright pay money for a game and mm. have it all there. Be able to just get on and play it rather than having a free-to-play game but having to nip in with like transactions here, there, and everywhere. Yeah. I'd be curious if you could technically do that. Uh, if you could technically pay for... 30,000 gems or something and it would be enough you know what I mean yeah to carry you all the way through the game I think maybe you could technically do that but I'm not sure because I haven't played the game all the way through but there might be a price point that you're willing to get in at so even though it's technically not for sale you could find a way to do it that way but I'm not sure yeah it'd take a bit more looking into and research and shit wouldn't it I'd also want it to be on the PC. I think it would be a game that I would rather play yeah. on the computer than it's just. Yeah, I don't. I don't like the mobile. Yeah, controls, I'm. But that's just I'm not very good with controlling things via a touch th- touch screen. <laughs> the closest that I can get to playing a game properly on a touch screen is uh, when I unlock my phone. <laughs> yeah, it's a very difficult game. It's a, it's a hard. I mean, yeah, it. remembering your password. Ugh. <laughs> ugh. No. That's why you just need one of those uh, voice recognition things or like your a face recognition. Yeah, thing, but somebody could fake my voice. Oh, they could. Or fake your face. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I do have a very attractive face. Why wouldn't anyone want to fake it? It should be sold in shops everywhere. It's like one of those Mission Impossible masks. I would wear it. I would wear it around. The Alice face. Just It just make you look like a, a creepy... Oh, leather leather face type <laughs> dealio. No, no, no. It would I would look beautiful. 
I'll be so pretty. Mm. You just let it be beautiful. Yes. You just want to be a beautiful white lady. I just want the advantages that come with. But yeah, I would recommend giving it a shot. It's free to play, and the microtransactions aren't really in your face or anything, Like a, a, as much as it's been reported that it is. Yeah, I think one of the main things is with... I want to be able to play it purely mobile, but when I downloaded it, it said it recommends that you want to, that you need to be connected to Wi-Fi, otherwise you use up all your data, and it's like, oh, <laughs> no. If it's a mobile game, I want to have an actually mobile experience. I want to be able to play it yeah. at work, for example. I wonder why that is. Oh, because the, the combat, maybe? It, it just it needs to be, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure where the, the network aspect comes in, but yeah. I think it's just to make sure that you're connected to the store, surely. <laughs> okay. Well, then you don't need a connection at all. <laughs> You'll be fine then. If you don't, you don't need to buy anything. It's just. It's, I don't know. It's a trick. I don't know. It's also like anti. It's it's like always online anti piracy measures and stuff, isn't it? Oh, you know what it might be. It might also be the timers. The timers for the chess. So like you have a chest. Uh, it opens in one hour, and maybe that clock doesn't continue to move unless you're connected. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It might be that. Otherwise, you could just advance the clock on your phone. Yeah. You do need to open the chest. The chest, because you only can only open one at a time. So that's another thing. If you get a gold chest, it takes six hours to open. So it's basically telling you to put the phone down. <laughs> that's the thing. It's like you get a gold chest. It's like, oh, I guess I'm done for the day. Like, come on. <laughs> six hours Find later. Find something new to do with your life, guys. Yeah. I don't know. Overall, uh, I like it. <laughs> At least it's not just like, um, oh, what do you call it? That fucking Harry Potter mystery game. It still pisses me off to this day. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you're a wizard, Harry, but only if you pay 500 credits. <laughs> Honestly, I have not played a mobile game <laughs> after, since that game came out. You have scars from that. You have mental wounds from this Harry Potter game. It's ruined mobile games for you. Like. It has. It's going to take something truly fabulous to convince me otherwise. <laughs> it's Elder Scrolls, though, so that's cool. It's, you get to the character creator. I like the character creator. It's it's kind of simplified, but at least they have I one. I do enjoy a good character creator. You can't really like edit the details of the face. You can pick from 10 or 11 different face types, but... Um, it's not super detailed, but it's detailed enough for a mobile. They do have some dialogue options. It's uh, You can be an asshole. You can be a sarcastic asshole to some NPCs. Constantly asking you who your name is, and you could just say, you know, my name is Alice. I best recognize <laughs> who I am. You can name your town, so I named ours Lord Friendly. Aww. After the podcast. The town of Lord Friendly is in shambles, but, you know, hopefully I'll build it up. <laughs> to where it's it's uh nice and uh i don't know livable populated. inhabitable <laughs> yes populated this yes. there's definitely um the, the npc sandbox too they walk around which is nice and also kind of annoying because it's hard for me to move on mobile so uh, it's yeah. like when i have to talk to an npc I, it's hard to like flag them down i have to keep tapping on my phone but i think if it was on pc if or if i had like a good grasp of the controls it would be uh, fun yeah. to play that part or fun that they're sandboxing not standing still I think your main griping is just the fact that it's a game that you have to play on mobile isn't it <laughs> yeah. I think I might enjoy it if it was on PC more yeah definitely because yeah. I'd have the controls down also it would be cool if you, it was moddable because again because of the lack of voice acting you could just put in as many NPCs and much text as you want. It's just, uh, I wonder if you could even add voice acting. That would be interesting. Ooh. I, surely it wouldn't have the code for it. Surely. Like just the base. Yeah, it's, it's mobile. So that's the thing. It's mobile. So how would you even install the, the mod if they made a mod yeah. for it? So, who knows? It's a nice thought, though, it's isn't it? It's a nice thought. <laughs> So, after two years, how long has About it been? About two, two years, years, yeah. Game of Thrones is back! Are you excited? Have you been excited these past few days? Um, I've been annoyed that I've not been able to go on social media all day. 
Yes, that is true. That is true. I have a habit of typing in Reddit or Twitter into my URL just out of just it's like a yeah. need. It's like a crack addiction, and you and you can't do that because you know there's going to be spoilers everywhere. Yeah. So. Luckily, I have gotten quite trained to not doing that because of how much I watch Drag Race, mm. and uh, of course, Drag Race is another American show that comes out <laughs> uh, before it comes out in England, and before I have a chance to watch it. So uh, I am quite well trained in avoiding these sorts of scenarios especially reality tv because every episode has a like monumental event because somebody gets voted off or whatever yeah. right so it's it's yeah you have to avoid that even game of thrones like things may not happen or they may happen yeah. but we'll discuss all that uh sh- should we start with the opener there's a new opener. yes i quite enjoyed it it was like oh so they took two years off to make a new opening <laughs> graphic okay cool <laughs> they spent all their time on the graphic. They had already finished the acting. They finished everything. All the actors went home. All the mm. producers, directors, everything. But you know, they, they, this was the bottleneck. It took them a while. The opener. Yes. Now, I was in. It's unusual because the whole purpose of the grand map was mm. because all of the characters were so far away from each other. Yeah. And now they're not. No. The characters are coalescing in two places, Winterfell and King's Landing. And King's Landing is so incredibly separate from everything else. So I appreciate why they've still gone with the map concept, but mm-hmm. it doesn't work as well. It made the introduction feel quite stretched out. Like, I loved seeing the new yeah, graphics and the new animation. I thought that was fabulous. And I loved seeing the little Iron Throne spring up. That was quite fun. But it just seemed a bit tedious, you know? It was like your uh, pop-up Iron Throne makeup. Yeah, thing. which I can't afford and can't get it's all sold out. I kind of like the the granular aspect of it in that we're focusing more on the small details, the characters, rather than the, yeah. the grand world building. Like, world building thing. Yeah, so I kind of liked it in that essence. I do get what you're saying in that it doesn't make it feel as big and as grand as it did before, where it was just this huge world with all these different places to visit. Yeah, and I can understand why it doesn't feel like that, but for Christ's sake, Last Hearth was in the episode for three minutes. It didn't need to be on the titles, did it? What are they going to replace that section with? Eventually, in the last episode, it's just going to be like a landmass of ice. It's just going to be a glacier. Actually, That's be actually that could be quite a fun concept. You know, seeing the ass, uh, the ice reaching further and further across the map. I think that could actually be quite a fun little twist, which would make me appreciate the new opening more and use the opening map as like a way to track where the White Walkers are. Yeah, yeah. By the last episode, it'll just show an ice cube. It's, it's just not... Nothing there. You're not going to have the budget ice. to make a new map. It's just ice. Yeah. It's, good. Do, 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 do. it's just zooming in on the ice cube. Do, do. Everybody is ice. That's the opening. Uh, Let's move on to the actual episode. We started with the arrival of this large army with Daenerys and Jon leading it. And this is the beginning of a lot of just like mirror things where we mirror the uh, opening of episode one, I guess, where Robert Baratheon and all uh, the Lannisters and all of them. And I was running off and seeing things. Yeah, and so they had the little boy running off. And up the trees. So Young Umba. There was a lot of that. Young Umba. Your thoughts on that whole scene? I quite liked it, honestly. Honestly, I did not mind it. Although there was one point in the whole like walking scene that I did quite mind. And it was oh, the bit was where that? um John was like, oh, us northerners, we don't like outsiders. And there was just like this <laughs> dramatic look of the, um, of the, <laughs> of the northerners. There was this yeah. long lingering shot on the Northerners looking at Missandei and Grey Worm. Yes, he was basically saying we Northerners were racist, and it was just like, oh, this feels like an attack. Because <laughs> obviously, people who are from the north in the show have Northern accents, aka mm-hmm. it's kind of the area that I come from. <laughs> and I'm not yes. going to lie, it's kind of true, but at the same time. <laughs> It just felt like a bit of an attack. I'm probably thinking, I'm definitely deep, thinking too deep into this, but it was just like, no, oh, no, no. yeah, Northerners are kind of racist. 
it is kind of on the nose there. I don't think that was a coincidence where there. Yeah. Where John was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because there are lots of um, smaller towns in the north that are far less multicultural. The town that I grew mm. up in had a ninety-four percent white population. Mm. I'm now in Nottingham, and I have experienced far more culture than I ever did in my 18 years living in my hometown. You're not making me moving there sound appealing. <laughs> no, I'm not. Sorry, mate. I'm going to have to rethink my vacation choices. Yeah, yeah. Just stick to the cities, mate. Stick to the cities and you'll be safe. I don't need all these weird glances from you northerners, but I mean, it'd be different if I had dragons. Yeah, because oh, that's yeah. basically <laughs> That's basically Danny's response to everything. It was like, like, oh, they don't like me? Well, look at these dragons. And then cue the dragons. They just fly through the sky, like right after John says that coffee. Yeah, alas, you do not have dragons, my friend. I'm sorry. I also thought it was interesting foreshadowing that John kind of just walked or trotted, I guess, cantered on his horse right by Arya. Without, yeah. Like, them even talking and uh, more on that later but then they arrive at the castle and john gets off his horse and then he sees bran kisses on forehead and bran's a robot (laughs) you're a man bran and he's like almost no you said that with too much emotion (laughs) almost yes true almost no i'm a raven I'm, I'm not a man. <laughs> Can you imagine if he if he kissed him on the forehead and he just like crowed at him? <laughs> oh god! Or I, if he just parroted what this he was said. the because uh... ravens can parrot what you say, right? No, that's parrots. No, ravens can too. Uh... I learned this from watching that YouTube of that guy with his raven who kept pecking. His oh eyes out yeah, that head. guy. <laughs> oh, that was a fun, fun, fun channel. That was. Yes, for those who are curious, Google Peter Kane. It is, it is crazy. <laughs> it's a YouTube channel. But uh, moving on, you were saying? Um, I can't remember. I am. I'm not a fan of emotionless Bran. Is he outside your window right now, staring at you? Is, is that what you're he saying? could fucking well be? No, it's just Isaac Hempstead Wright is a really good actor. He's a phenomenal voice actor, in fact. Yes. And the way that they're directing him is it's it feels like they're just like, right, we have a teleprompter in front of you. You've never seen your lines before. <laughs> We're going with the first take. Are you sure they didn't just replace him with just a robot? With a Westworld voice robot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or a text to speech generator. <laughs> Honestly, wouldn't be surprised. You're delivering this line with too much emotion. We're just gonna, we're just gonna go with. We're Siri just gonna, on yeah. We're just gonna auto tune that out of you. Yeah. Why don't you sit this one out? Oh, you wait. You're already sitting. Why don't you just, uh, you know, just just, just chill. Yeah. But yeah, I'm. He's a better actor than what emotionless Bran is being. You can be some sort of omnipotent, intelligent being and not be dead. You know. <laughs> Are we sure he's not dead? Honestly, Are it feels like sure? he is dead. Honestly. <laughs> the other thing we had in this sort of meeting is is uh, Sansa and Danny meeting for the first time. And, uh, and they do not like each other. So both Sansa and Daenerys are very good characters at being courtly and cordial. They both, in the books anyway, understand the importance of being cordial towards one another in a courtly setting because they know that that is the best way to advance your agenda. Mm -hmm. Like Daenerys in A Dance with Dragons. Now, I struggle to read through those chapters because it's all very confusing, but she has got a fantastic way of getting to grips with the social context and she adapts herself so that she fits in with the royalty of the society that she's trying to rule. And Sansa is very much the same. Sansa is a social chameleon. And that's why people dismissed her. So to have them reacting towards each other so openly bitchy, especially (laughs) Sansa, because Sansa's the one who started it in this episode, Sansa would never do that. There was some massive side-eye going on when they were in that hall. They were just... It's classic Game of Thrones cattiness between women. It's it's like they can't have positive rea- interactions between women. Yeah, exactly. Even if it was just a fake veneer. Yeah. 
I guess when I imagine sort of witty English women being catty with each other, they would do it in a way that like it was a compliment, but yeah. the subtext would be an insult. That's less, exactly right? how we do it. <laughs> That's exactly how it goes. Whereas with two catty American women, which is what this felt more like, was just the constant side eye, the direct insults, the <laughs> just like the obvious this thing. Yeah. And the thing is, they are not children. Yeah. They are the most important political actors. Fucking act like it. Yeah, exactly. There is no room for this cattiness in your politics. But again, this is something that is systematic of yeah. the writing. And the direction. And maybe trust your audience to understand that subtext rather yeah. than hit them over the head with the, the obvious visual disdain that they have for each or, other. Or even if they just had a scene afterwards where Sansa was like, I don't trust her. Yeah, exactly. And then, because John is John, he'd be like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, what? But you guys were getting along so well. There's subtext to this? And then, of course, Bran, because... Bran is the one who's who's on point here. He's like, we don't have time for this. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I don't have time for it either, mate. Yeah. But then it carries on into the next scene where they're in the hall meeting all the Northern yeah. Lords. And Sansa's like, yeah, so, uh, which is fair enough for her because she has been doing her job as the Lady of Winterfell. And honestly, when it mentions Sansa's stockpiling and her organising of the stores and things like that, that is far more the role of a medieval lady and the power that a medieval woman would hold in her household. That's a far more accurate representation than most of the Game of Thrones gives us. And she raised the very viable thing that she was like, oh... I I wasn't expecting to have to feed two armies and some dragons and a load of Dothraki. So uh, what we're going to do, guys? <laughs> what do dragons eat? <laughs> Whatever they want. That, that's the Targaryen answer to anything. It's just fire and blood, fire and yeah. blood. Eat whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was my first thought as well when I saw the armies walking. I was like, oh my God, that's a lot of mouths to feed. And It's winter. Feed? Yes. It's winter, guys. <laughs> because it's not just the armies that they've got to feed, they've also got to feed the small folk, which is the whole reason why they're needing to protect the North in the first place, to look after the small folk. You would think if the Night King wanted to win the war outright, he could just kind of just sit back and just starve the army to death. Yeah, he? starve the dragons to death. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, and then when they're dead, you could just walk right in and raise up a new army. Just it? like, so. way, done. <laughs> What else happened in that scene? Oh, we got the first hint of this conflict in which the northern armies uh, do not support Daenerys. They they don't really want to get behind her. They you know they nominated John as their they or they crowned him as king of yeah. the north. And Lyanna Mormont is is kind of just the fiery little kid. You know she should be she should sit on the. She's a teenager again. now, yeah. mate. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I, I can't when tell, she but... first appeared in the scene, I was like, oh, hang on. Hang on. Oh, God, it, that's Lyanna. <laughs> what? There was also that scene with the little kid. He comes out. He's like, my lady, my lord, and my queen. <laughs> I don't know who to refer to as who <laughs> anymore. Then the next scene we have is of Tyrion and Sansa. They meet for the first time since Joffrey's wedding, I believe. Yeah. No real mention of the fact that they're actually married. He did mention... That the last time they parted, he had to explain to everyone why his wife left them. I don't recall that, but you've rewatched it, so I don't know. Let us know in the comments who's right. Probably Chris, because he's watched it twice. But um, honestly, I feel like it should have been more the focal point of that scene, because that's the big fucking elephant in the room, is <laughs> that they're married, and their marriage was never... Well, it was never consummated. As far as I believe, it wasn't consummated, but as far as I'm aware, it wasn't properly annulled. But then, again, this is maybe me confusing books and TV show, because in the books, Sansa's marriage has not been annulled yet, because it takes the death of her husband to basically annul the marriage. I think it can be annulled at any time, though, if they haven't consummated the marriage. I don't know, it's complicated. It, because I know when I was reading Fire and Blood, there was mention of that when Jaharis and Alassane eloped, which was controversial because they're brother and sister and they didn't want to anger the Sept. And 
Rogar Baratheon was basically saying that they could annul the marriage because it was never consummated because uh, Jaehaerys and Alasan were too young. So I think in this case that would apply as well. Yeah. Yeah, I need to get <laughs> further into it with Fire and Blood. But yeah, it's it's a complicated issue. So, but I also think that she would have been more welcoming to Tyrion had he not joined up with Daenerys. Because if he came to her under different circumstances, he wasn't under the the banner of of this woman she openly despises in the TV show. Then I think it, she might have been kinder to him because he was kind to her. Yeah. Again, this is my book knowledge leaking in. He was not the best of husbands in the book, but in the show, his relationship towards her was portrayed as being as sweet as a child marriage can get, I suppose. Yeah. She did describe him as kind, I believe, was the word she used. Yeah. So that was the perception she had of him when they parted. Yeah. So you would think that some of that would carry over, maybe not a lot of it, but it's just at this point, so much time has passed. And speaking of which, that's kind of the case with John and Arya. It's nice. Yeah. <laughs> there is this warmth, but there's also this underlying just distance between them because they're not the same people john cracks a joke yeah. about sansa and Arya's like she's like no she's the smartest person i ever knew fuck off yeah. and it's there's clearly this rift and then it's going to play out later on there's, there's this whole conflict of whether john is with the targaryens or with the starks and and it goes yeah. back to his entire lineage so now, and uh, speaking of the lineage th- Mm -hmm. And this is just an issue that I have with how the TV show is portraying Rhaegar and Lyanna's relationship in that Lyanna's 14. Yeah. Lyanna is 14 when she meets Rhaegar. Rhaegar's in his mid to late 20s. Yeah, that's that's weird. (laughs) No matter how way you frame it, no matter which way you frame it, that, oh, it's this grand romance and da-da-da-da, it's still a much older man exploiting, and this is this is the only way to put it because she is fourteen exploiting a young girl. Mm-hmm. Like no matter which way you frame it, that's what the relationship is. So maybe yes, they were in this grand love, but it's still weird, and he's still in a massive position of power over her. Do you really think she would have been able to say no? Uh, no, I don't want to get married. No, I don't want to have your kid. Yeah, even if she was in love at 14, she's not mature enough to make that kind of decision. Yeah. And what it comes down to, basically, is that Rhaegar is a creep, and he not only cheated on his wife, he kind of annulled their marriage and rendered his children bastards. Yeah, he he was like, no, I want this kid. I want this kid. I'm not even certain about how he's going to make it past childbirth. Because, you know, I'm fucking a 14-year-old. And you know what being 14 and having a kid is? Really fucking dangerous. But there we go. Because prophecy. (laughs) His prophecy was there are three heads of the dragon. Yes, You can't chop off two heads to give yourself one, you know. Yeah, that's real fuzzy math there, Rhaegar. (laughs) Yeah. You don't have to be Asian to know that. One thing I liked about the whole Jon and Arya scene was the first thing she said was he used to be taller. So I guess my (laughs) question to you, Alice, is... Did they fire the old box that John used to stand on to make himself look taller? I think they did. I think they did fire the old box. Yeah, they got a new one. Just like they replaced Dario. And just like they replaced like Marcella and a couple other uh, Tommen, I believe. Yeah. They replaced the box. Yeah. And this is their way of mentioning it. This is their way of just kind of... Just like, ha 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 ha, lol. <laughs> used to be taller. Uh, uh, that, that box was fired. We have a new box. It's shorter. It's... uh. But it worked. Which is really sad for the poor yeah. box. I hope it's got a decent retirement plan in place. Yes, I, I mean, it, it'll get other jobs. Maybe it'll find work working with Tom Cruise. Oh, it, there you go. There you go. Maybe that's what happened. Maybe the box... It's been inducted into Scientology. Yes, the box found a, a higher paying job with Tom Cruise and left the show. And that's it. It's happy now. Hmm. Happy and confused because it believes in weird religious stuff like operating Thetans yeah. and all that. Who knows? Next up, we leave Winterfell. We have King's Landing. And we see the Golden Company for the first time. Nice armor. Yes, yes. Very shiny. Oh, yeah. 
golden one might say yes yes i guess if you're the golden company you can't show up and steal you have you have to wear gold it's just that's the way it is oh it's just something with a bit of gold on it you know Accents. isn't gold soft though does gold work as armor i don't know no no it does not gold is ve- very malleable so are we thinking it's spray painted steel maybe is this like the ikea yeah, rugs? colored steel <laughs> Yeah, cool. It's they got their armor from IKEA, probably. It's not even real. Yeah, it spray painted. S- still it. looks good, though. Yeah, it's very beautiful. So we get like 2,000 or whatever soldiers. I forget how, what the number was, probably like 20,000. A lot. It was a lot. Got horses, but no elephants. Uh, does the No <laughs> elephants. The Golden Company have elephants? Did I believe they do. <laughs> Are they golden elephants? <laughs> I think you'd need an awful lot of spray paint to spray paint an elephant gold. Maybe that's why they couldn't bring them over. It was funny because when Lena Headey said that line, she was like smirking through it the whole time. She was trying very hard not to laugh. She just wanted she an elephant. Was, she, that would be funny if she was like riding an elephant into a battle. If it was like, oh my god, yes, a war elephant. That is the dream. We also had more Euron mentioning balls again. Every time Euron's on screen, he has to mention his dick or his balls. He's kind of like us. He would fit in right in with this podcast. Yeah, only I don't murder people. Yeah, that's true. I don't think you do either. Not confirmed, but I don't (laughs) think you do. No, no, I haven't. Haven't lately. I've, you know, I'm taking a break from that. But, and then they, they kind of fuck. It just comes out of nowhere. They just. It's Cersei kind of sees her opportunity. And this is the most book-like Cersei she's been in that she uses her sexual desirability as mm-hmm. a way to manipulate people and work them to get on her side. <laughs> so I appreciated that. No. Yeah. I like that the first thing she said after they were done is, man, I really wanted those elephants. <laughs> yeah. Feels. I would also feel that if I was like, oh. I just had sex with this guy for elephants, but then I realized that I didn't have elephants. Yes, oh. yes. I'd feel kind of cheated, honestly. Yeah, and then he touches her belly and says, I'm going to put a prince in there. But she's like, all I want is an elephant. I don't want a prince. No, I've had <laughs> princes before. They're boring. My new thing is elephants. Yes, and if it was an elephant like Dumbo, if if he decided to commit suicide like Tom and out the window, he might be able to fly and save himself. You know, it's just... I don't think saving yourself is the priority if you're... Yeah. Uh... That's true. Yeah, so well, quickly, if he yeah. jumped out the window, it would be less cause for alarm. How about that? Yeah. It's what Dumbo does. Won't lead to Nevum unsupervised. Yeah. Whereas if it's Tommen, then, you know, it's He's probably not going to be able to fly, is he? Nah, you're scraping him off the floor at that point. Off the street. Off the pavement. <laughs> then next we have another callback to season one. Prostitutes. Naked prostitutes. Tits everywhere. Yeah. Not a particularly Wrong. important scene, though, was it? But it was a nice little... I like that it was at least comedic and not yeah. sexual. Not like, ooh, are you titillated? <laughs> yeah, because the whole time they were talking about people's faces being burnt off and stuff like that. And then there was that great line where the maester was like, poor girl, the pox will take her in a year. And Bronn's like, which what? girl? No. Uh, the important thing about that scene was we learned that Cersei is going to have her brothers killed. I mean, I think we could have figured that out for ourselves, yeah. honestly. <laughs> That's not surprising. Do you think Bronn's going to do it? No. To It's going to be his redeeming moment. Yeah, see, this is the thing about Game of Thrones in that there's a typical way that these kind of stories go, but then at the same time, Ned Stark died. <laughs> so there's always that thing in the in the back of your mind where you're thinking, okay, there's no way he does this, but then again, Ned Stark died. So you never no, know. I don't think it's. Yeah. I don't think he's going to do it. And then next we have Theon saving Yara from a lifetime of dig and ball jokes. Yay. And then Theon tells Yara that he's going to go to Winterfell and join up with the Starks. And she gives him permission. Yeah, it's a very nice scene. She also mentions that the Iron Islands might be the only like safe haven from the dead. Which, true enough. But they have a dragon now, so <laughs> maybe not. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, and whites can go underwater, can't they? Yeah, they could get chains and (laughs) attach chains to all the Iron Islands and then yank them down. I I don't think that's how islands work. I mean, the the castles on the Iron Islands. Oh, right. I was going to say, trying to drag down the island and sweetheart, that's not how sea levels work. But moving on. So after all this Paul digging and all this drama, Danny and John finally find a minute to 
fly off and have some time together. It was Skyrim dragon riding. <laughs> John gets to ride Rhaegal, which is kind of poetic in a way. And then uh, it is it does get kind of weird when Danny says uh, we could stay a thousand years because that's kind of what Igrit said to him, right? Yeah. In the cave. I mean, if in the next episode she says, you know nothing, Jon Snow, then <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to be weirded out. But John surprisingly took that in stride. Like he didn't even blink. And I feel like he should have gotten a little bit more emotional about that because Igrid was his first love. Yeah, yeah. And there yeah. should have been some sort of reaction. We can't just forget about Igrid because you've got to bear it in mind. Uh, the girl who plays Igrid is his yeah. fiance <laughs> yeah. or his wife now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, don't just. I, w- I will not stand for this ginger erasure. <laughs> Yeah, it, it is kind of weird and awkward, especially when you have two dragons kind of staring at you while you make out. It's just kind of... <laughs> yeah, I, I appreciated that. That was funny. Because it's always strange when you when you have pets in the room. They're not just pets. They're her kids. She calls them her children. That's even stranger to have fire-breathing kids in the room while you're yeah. burning your aunt. I think you should have just stopped and said, can we just go yeah. back? <laughs> I, I, I don't feel comfortable, mate. I do not know. It probably would have been hard to, or not hard, but I'm cha. Um. <laughs> oh shit! I've just, I've just had a thought. Cersei's um massive crossbow is shown in the new intro, and it's highlighted quite heavily. Oh okay. It's Chekhov's gun. No, how are they going to, to take? Used. How are they? Yeah. How are they going to take down the massive fucking dragon that is evil? Wasn't that crossbow used, though, in the the battle where Randall Tarly died and Samuel Tarly died? Yes, but it was highlighted again in the intro. Oh, okay. Which implies to me that it has got further use in the series, because otherwise they'd have just forgotten about True. it. Which True. is going to be the way that they bring down the evil dragon. True. Maybe. Or evil three dragons if they made yeah. it all the way to King's Landing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then we have that... Amazing Samwell and Danny scene where Danny Which, kind yes. of breaks the knees. And please, can we carry on acknowledging her fuck ups? Yes, yes. It's funny the contrast with the fact that he is apologizing for stealing like a couple books mm. and she burned his father and brother alive. And it's just, yeah, that. I think the brother's the really hard hitting one, you know? Yeah. yeah. He was like, oh, okay, my father's dead, yeah, but I hated him. But, you know, at least my brother's still alive. You yeah. Know? And she's like, yeah, about that. <laughs> yeah, and that was what spurred Sam to tell John, you're the child. <laughs> it was a bit like, okay. It felt a bit anticlimactic, honestly, but there we go. That was a great performance by the yeah. actor. He is John doing Bradley. fun, yeah. And that scene between him and John was really good. Yeah, yeah, because the way he kind of held in his his emotions in check, and yet, and you could see sort of just the anger the and struggle. sadness. Yeah, the the whole struggle with the learning about his the people that he loved were burned alive, or well, I guess he didn't know that they were burned alive, but that they died, that they were executed, and he still managed to kind of just with dignity, sort of you know, excuse himself. And yeah, he's like ambling into the courtyard, and then. Bran tells him, you know, Bran's still sitting there, by the way. He's been there all night. <laughs> yeah, he's waiting for his friend. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm just chilling here. He's just right at the gate. Doesn't care if, like, horses have to go around him. He's just, like, you know, Doesn't care right if here. his uh, human body, his mortal form is going to get hypothermia. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of the, like, the local taco joint. When they close or they want to let you know that the drive through is broken, they place, like, a big trash can right in the drive through lane so you can't drive in through there. Yeah, that that that's what it kind of reminded me of for some reason. Bran just sitting there right in the gate. Nobody can Getting come Getting in or everyone's pass. way. Yeah, yeah. But then John and Sam go into the crypt, and for a brief second, Sam says, your mother is Lyanna Stark, which makes it really weird because for a brief second, John thinks that his parents were incestuous. But eventually it clears up, and John finds out that he is Aegon Targaryen, six of his name, king of all Westeros. Whether he is willing to accept it, we don't know. But I feel like the scenes should have been edited around a little bit. 
mm-hmm. so have Sam try and plead with John, you are this, and Tim not accepting it, not accepting it, not accepting it, and then he goes to see the dragons and he goes on the dragon ride. I feel oh, like okay. that would have been a better placement of scenes. Yeah, you wanted the realization to hit later, not so quickly. You wanted more yeah. pushback, I guess. Maybe even the next episode or something. Yeah, but I feel like the dragon riding scene would have had more meaning then. Mm-hmm. Instead of just a way to use up the CGI budget. Just the placement of the scenes, they should have been the other way around. I guess there would have been more confusion of when he realizes it, because he couldn't actually vocalize that. It would yeah. have to be more just nuanced acting. I did like the whole struggle with identity that he had. Like It mirrors again the first episode where he was struggling with being a bastard and now he's struggling with being a king, more or less, right? Yeah. Also, another thing that Samuel brought up, which is a good point, is that you gave up your crown, would she do the same? There's They're kind of seeding this thing about how Danny isn't the best person for this job and John is. Yeah. He's the only person who doesn't want to be king. He doesn't want to sit on the Iron Throne. He's like the one guy who doesn't, and maybe that makes him the best suited. I don't know. But at the same time, that kind of, that again goes against book depictions, but there we go. <laughs> uh, especially in regards to Danny, because Daenerys in the books is trying her best and striving to be a good leader. Yeah. And it's her moral conscience which makes it more difficult for her, whereas in the TV, it's the other way around. No. Book Daenerys would not have burnt Randall and Dickon alive. <laughs> in the books, Fucking he wouldn't be name. named Dickon, maybe. I don't know. No, he's, he's still named Dickon. Oh, he is? Yeah, George can get a little funky there's, with the names. There's also a uh, Tully called um, Kermit. Yes, yes. There's like Muppet Kermit. There's like Elmo, right? There's a yeah. Elmo and there's a Kermit and yeah. <laughs> George, George likes to have fun. We appreciate that about George. I can't blame him. I can't blame him. <laughs> but I'm glad they did it in the first episode. Like, I'm glad they didn't drag it out too long. Because... Just like, by the way, you're the rightful heir. <laughs> Maybe. Possibly. <laughs> Depending on if uh, that marriage got annulled. Or if they even survive. Because let's face it, I don't reckon there's going to be a throne left. Which... <laughs> And the final scene, or more or less, not the final scene, the penultimate scene, the Night King makes an appearance. Maybe not on screen, but we have this group of scouts led by Tormund and, and what, Beric Dondarrion. Yeah, the and, Brotherhood Without Banners and some uh, wildlings. Yeah, they go to check on Lord Umber, the little boy from the beginning, um, and he has been nailed to a wall with uh, a flesh spiral surrounding him. Which, again, is a nice callback to the uh, first episode. Yeah, they had like some kind of fleshy... like It wasn't the same symbol, though, in the first episode. It wasn't the right? same, but it was quite similar. Right. They have shown the spiral in other places, I think. They've shown it... Oh, I can't remember. There was there was a couple scenes where there was like an overhead shot of the, the weirwood tree, and there was like a spiral around it. Yeah. And there was another scene there that, that had the spiral. But it's been shown in a couple places, which kind of leads you to believe it might be a symbol from the children of the forest um i'm not sure though the weirwood thing would make that connection but what do you think the the spiral means i don't know what it means but i found it quite interesting that in the show they pointed Mm -hmm. out the sun the sunburst of the cast arc banner ah (laughs) the mattel logo it looks just just like the mattel logo for barbies (laughs) But, yeah, I feel like that symbol's kind of similar-ish. Not True. super similar, but somewhat similar. Which points to it maybe having its origins with the Thirst Men or something like that. Mm-hmm. Who were followers of the Children of the Forest. Yeah, another theory I saw on Reddit is that because it went up in flames and the, the, the spiral kind of looks almost like the sigil of the Targaryen sigil. So that maybe it was like some ancient Targaryen or something but i don't know about that they just mm. haven't like seeded that at all no. in terms of just like um the targaryens don't really have a history in the north yeah and that's the thing about the night king in general though is that we don't really know much about him so mm-hmm. any kind of revelation of who he is is going to be meaningless it's not going to be earned really it's, it's... surprise it's rhaegar targaryen <laughs> yeah. 
like if it turned out to be some ancient Stark or ancient, you know, Targaryen or whatever, it's just means nothing to us. There's no history there for that's been sort of like put into the show, seeded into the early episodes of the show. But yeah, the thing is, the leader of the others in the again going back to the books isn't called the Night King. Mm-hmm. The Night King is the name of a Night's Watchman who um, fell in love with another. Uh, right, the uh, female other, right? Yeah. Wasn't she the Night Queen? Yeah. Yeah. And they ruled over the Watched until they were ousted. Yeah, so maybe there's like some conflation there where it's this yeah. guy. But again, that his history hasn't been told in the show. Like, they never had the grandmother... Or who was the, the lady who watched over Bran? They never had her tell that story, did she? Or maybe uh, she did. I don't remember. Old Nan. Old Nan, yeah. I don't know if she told that story. But they don't repeat it enough to where it's something that people would recognize right away. Like, oh, that's the guy. But yeah. Mm. I do like the image of the sort of Night King making his art on the wall. <laughs> it's, just like... it's like, oh, we need to put that arm a little bit to the left, you know. <laughs> Get the arch right on it. <laughs> Yeah, it's hilarious. I just what if some of the arms were not like the right size? He's like, no, or no, weren't no. stacking <laughs> on the wall. Yeah. Could you imagine? Yeah. Oh, I had the perfect arm, but it just won't stay. It's too weighty. <laughs> He's like leaning back, making that like photograph symbol, framing it, framing it. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, uh, my other question to you is, what does the Night King want? Like, what's the point? <laughs> what's his deal? Um, I don't know. Honestly, I do not know. I mean, he could just be this, like, Lovecraftian, like, horror thing where they they have no motive. You know, they just are. They're just, like, fucking, they're there to just destroy. They have no motive or human sort of um, wants or desires. Yeah. I guess that could work. Uh, It's kind of like a cop-out, though, at the same time. But is there an explanation that makes sense? I mean, why doesn't the Night King just stay on his side of the wall eat his frosted flakes and just chill. <laughs> like, like, why does he have to go south? I don't know. One theory that I quite liked is that the White Walkers were afraid of the humans. Mm-hmm. But I can't remember the entire theory. I haven't read it in like a year. <laughs> but yes, overall, not an episode that I hated. <laughs> and then the last scene, uh, which is very memeable, is we have this hooded rider. I thought that was going to be Melisandre at first. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, she was hooded for most of her time on the show. Mm-hmm. I thought she was disguised as the old woman. Mm-hmm. But the hood comes off. Turns out to be Jamie. And there's Bran. <laughs> yeah. And he's just like, oh, shit. <laughs> he was there all night. Because when Jamie gets there, it's like morning time. Yeah. <laughs> I've been waiting for you. Yes. Old friend. <laughs> you got a big storm coming and I hope this is something that makes Bran react emotionally just somewhat somewhat why Why would he be waiting out there like assuming that he's not Bran and he's the three eyed raven why would he be waiting out there for Jamie? yeah it only makes sense if he's Bran if there's still some Bran in him yeah because it's personal this is the thing that set him on his path if yeah. nothing else it should make him a little bit emotional you know? Yeah, yeah, possibly. I mean, we might even get a performance from Isaac Hempstead instead of Siri. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I would like from this series. Give his, because that's not a nice thing to have to put on your acting reel. <laughs> I was, true. I'm very good at acting emotionlessly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be typecast as a robot. Can you imagine how limited the roles would be? For that? Oh God, so limited. I would not envy him. But hey, at least it'd be getting cast. <laughs> That's true. It, it's money. It's it's a job. I mean, it's more than we could say for the box, you know, that got fired. So. Poor box. Yeah. Living off of all that Scientology dollar. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a living, though. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do, whether it's cat pornos or Scientology. To base yourself, just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's just we life, We both isn't it? speak from experience here. Yeah. Oh, so wow. overall, um, any other thoughts on the episode? I'm intrigued to see if my theory about the introduction holds up about the crossbow. Oh, oh, right, 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 right. I'm interested to see if that holds up. 
is it transportable? We transported well, Braun and Jamie transported it, yeah. right? So it's possible to transport it to Winterfell, I guess, but it seems like something that would take a long time. But then again, so I mean time doesn't really apply in this show, as we learned last <laughs> season. <so. laughs> just teleport it. We'll just put it in a teleport device and it'll be in Winterfell. Just attach it to a couple of ravens. There was nothing to really upset me regarding the uh, timeline. <laughs> oh. Yeah, this episode seemed to kind of make logistical sense. I mean, Sansa mentioned the, the food supplies and all that, and there wasn't anything crazy time-wise. Um, no one died. Yes. Well, the kid died. <laughs> yeah. The kid who was introduced this episode. I don't think he was in the He was episode. introduced in a previous episode because oh, Sansa was. gave him a pardon. <laughs> Other than Lord Umber, um, what do you think is going Who's going to live? Who's going to die going forward? Oh yeah, is one for the block. Oh wow, really? I'd say John and Daenerys. Wow. And Cersei, Cersei's gonna die. Yeah, Cersei dying is probably. Uh, and the concept of the Iron Throne is going to die. So we're gonna have split kingdoms, like all these little fiefdoms, or. Yeah, it's gonna go back to how it was before the Targaryens. Yeah, that makes sense. It'd be kind of oddly poetic in a way i mean people have been fighting for this throne throughout the entire series and at the end nobody gets it yeah i think that's what i think will happen what about you it would make sense i think for john to sit on the throne or be crowned the king and then just leave it i guess or be yeah just just... like i hate the monarchy let's elect some people yeah, and just like abolish the government at that point, and then that's how it happens. There's also like a theory of, you know, like R'hllor, didn't he stab his wife to get his flaming sword yeah. or something like that? So maybe that's how Danny dies, as she sacrifices Azor, himself. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know if Arya's gonna die just because she's, uh, I mean, I guess it makes sense, but she's, I mean, how old is she in the story? Uh, but I children don't... die all the time. I mean, they yeah. burn Shireen alive, so... And she was yeah. the cutest of children. <laughs> and that's the thing. I guess it's the whole Ned Stark theory where I feel like it makes sense for John to be the last person alive and be the king and be all that and have a happy ending. But also the fact Ned Stark dies. It's just, the Game of Thrones is born off breaking convention and that would be yeah. the ultimate break from convention is to have him die. So <laughs> Plus he's a zombie. It's yeah, just, he's already just, died once. Like, yeah. come on. So it's just, I don't know, it's uh, conventional wisdom would be that you get the happy ending, Cersei is the one who dies, Euron gets dies. fired, yeah, Euron dies horribly, and the Night King dies, but then again, it's like, there's that one little thing where it's just, it happened in season one, it may happen in season eight, because that's the trademark of Game of Thrones, so mm. we'll see. I don't know, that's not really an answer, <laughs> I guess I don't have an answer. Fair play, fair play. Better to be safe and hedge your bets. Yes, yes. The the one thing I will know for certain, though, is they will not make wheelchair ramps for Bran because for some reason, yeah, they just don't. You know what I know for certain? There's not going to be any elephants. Yes. Oh, that's true. No elephants. No elephants. But Alas. no elephants dying, so that's good, too. Yay. <laughs> good for elephant rights all around. All right. That's it, I believe, for this episode. We've covered everything there's nothing else that we need uh, to cover. have you seen how long we've been recording for <laughs> yes we've been recording Ooh. for a while but it's a very very um dense episode I, there's a lot to go over yeah know. lot to cut out do you mean <laughs> <laughs> all right um that's it for this episode uh tune in next week see you next week goodbye <laughs>